Hey everyone, this is uh, Mike Whalen with the Detroit News. And we are live here at the LA Auto Show. It is a massive facility, a massive show at the LA Convention Center. We are in their largest hall right now. And we're gonna take a walk around the show floor and show you a lot of the debuts and just some of the hottest vehicles. A lot of these you will be able to see in Detroit in January at the North American International Auto Show. So here's a little sneak peek. We're starting here with Volkswagen and we'll make our way kind of around the whole convention center. Um, Volkswagen today actually unveiled the Atlas, which is their newest full-size SUV. Feature, and they even did it with the help of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, they wanted to show how big the vehicle actually was on the interior. So they had Kareem get in it and hop out of it. It was uh, pretty interesting. And they just, they showed the vehicle before, but this is the first time it's been at the auto show. They also did their electric e-golf. The company's really shifting away from uh, diesel, and they're doing a new electric strategy, which the think new is kind of an idea to try to get them away from the diesel gate scandal, which is kind of still ongoing, and they settled with the owners, but uh, they're just trying to move away from that and get people to think of them as a different company. So we've got just kind of VW's whole lineup right here right now. Over next is Toyota Country. Toyota did a very interesting concept debut that uh, Henry Payne, our auto critic, absolutely loved. And to be honest, I have not been able to see it yet, but here it is right up here and we're approaching it after we kind of go through the pickup country. The to it's the Toyota CHR, and I take that back. I'm not sure if it is a concept. I know that they showed a concept of it before. No, this is actually the production model for the CHR, and Henry Payne just said he loved the design of it, and it's a really aggressive design, for especially for Toyota, which typically has kind of been a well, known for making microwaves and uh, toasters and kind of focusing on fuel efficiency rather than design. It kind of looks like a pretty good hot hatch though um, from the automaker. A lot of press in there taking photos of it and the screen actually looks a little small compared to some of the other ones we've seen on the interior but here is the Toyota CHR. It made its debut actually just earlier today. And we got another silver one over here as well. Hmm. It's really kind of futuristic. It, uh, and made the headlights particular, if you look at them, they've got a lot of detail to them. We've got the three, I'm guessing, LED right there along with the HID for the kind of extended light and the whole design of the car is just pretty unique. Toyota has been going a little bit more aggressive with their design, but I don't think anyone thought that they were gonna go this aggressive with this vehicle. And of course we have Toyota's rest of the lineup. And as I said, if you look at their design right now, if they're mostly kind of just simple designs uh, ahead of from the new Toyota Prius though, which has been actually getting a little... People haven't actually liked this design too much for the new uh, Prius. I actually don't have a problem with it. I think it looks better than the last version, which just has been outdated. And here's their fuel cell vehicle as well. Yes, people are actually developing fuel cell vehicles. They see them as kind of a better alternative to the EVs. However, just like the EVs, there are huge infrastructure concerns with how are you going to actually charge the fuel cell vehicle, especially if you're going long distances. Interesting design as well too though. I mean, Toyota is kind of going in that direction. And now we'll head over to Mazda here. And Mazda did their new CX-5. And we actually did a live unveil of that as well. And again, we're, this is Mike Whalen with the Detroit News, and we're just gonna take you through all of the displays for the uh, LA Auto Show, and there are a lot. 
Um, so this might take a bit. I'll try to get through them quickly, but there are a lot of beautiful, beautiful vehicles here. And the CX-5 is one of them. This vehicle was actually only three or four years old, and then they decided to completely redo it. And it's gonna do, it's gonna be their design language for all the future vehicles. So it is very elegant, very smooth, very luxurious. And Tomas has really done a good job of turning around their lineup to kind of focus on more design and fuel efficiency. And it will also be offered in diesel, which kind of uh, surprised a lot of people. They're trying to get away from uh, kind of tap into that VW diesel market since VW is no, uh, completely out of it and focusing on the electric. And we've got everybody's uh, favorite all-wheel drive manufacturer, um, particularly for the uh, green car lovers and the environment and pet owners, supposedly, is Subaru. And they actually did a large three-row SUV, which they are not known for. And the last one had some problems. And this is the, I honestly don't even know how to pronounce that exactly, the Visibi 7 SUV concept. And this is just a concept. So obviously they might change it for production or they might not even make it. But interesting design. Definitely a little bit more aggressive for Subaru, just like Toyota. And with all the manufacturers having great cars that are out right now, and especially for the different technologies, they're really trying to set each other apart with design and drawing attention to their vehicles. It looks like this is pretty much just an exterior vehicle uh, concept because the windows are blacked out. So while it might be a three-wheel, yeah, they do not have a complete interior actually in there. But good-looking exterior design for them. And it's something that Maz or Subaru needs to actually grow its uh, membership or ownership a little bit. It's been steadily growing for years and years now. And they're actually one of the best known for their durability and just um, residual values. Now we've got our first domestic automaker, if you can, I guess that's a relative term depending on uh, where they're building the vehicle and what vehicle, as almost every single vehicle here that they viewed at the LA Auto Show is actually not made in the U.S. Um, that's a whole other situation that you can read about in the Detroit News tomorrow, but here we have Cadillac. And Cadillac's also been going for a much more aggressive, sporty design uh, to go up against BMW a little bit more. While Lincoln's going kind of for quiet sophistication, Cadillac is not, as you can tell by their newest concept, actually, the Escala. The Escala. Um, this vehicle debuted actually at Pebble Beach, but this is its first time at the auto show and really the first glimpse that the public's going to get of it. Really, Cadillac comes out with these design concepts and they kind of put different cues of it throughout their entire lineup. And you can kind of see the headlights that are a little bit smaller than usual. And a lot of automakers are going toward that. And here's a look at the interior as well. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. An extremely modern interior with oh wow look at how big those screens are in there it looks like an e-shifter knob in there and talk about more screens here we go really beautiful elegant vehicle from Cadillac. I'm almost surprised actually they didn't do what Tesla's been doing for this one and continue the windshield uh, almost all the way through to the top of the vehicle but uh, you know to his their own and uh, Tesla's doing some interesting things. They're also here but not actually in this hall. They are in between this hall and another hall and they pretty much have their Model X the SUV set up as well as the Model uh, S they do not have the Model 3, which is going to be their kind of new um, entry level, well, $35,000 entry level EV. And we got the Acadia Denali here, which actually was unveiled in Detroit um, for the auto show earlier this year in January. 
good looking car. They dropped 700 pounds, I believe, out of this vehicle. But let's continue on to more of the actual debuts that uh, came out uh, for the show this week. Here we've got the Chevy um, stage. And you know, a lot of these stages you will see in Detroit as well. This one is somewhat the same or similar to uh, what they had in Detroit last year. And while it's not a debut for this week, we're going to go take a look at the Chevy Bolt with the BEV. And it's got 238 miles of range. It's going to be built in Lake or Orient Township at its facility. And this is really the first mainstream EV. And it's supposed to go up against the Model 3 when that actually arrives in dealer showrooms supposedly by the end of next year, but this will actually be in showroom by the end of this year. And here's their actually debut, um, which they did off-site, but the Colorado GR2, meant for off-roading and kind of to go up against the Tacoma, which has really dominated the uh, mid-size pickup truck segment for those mid-size uh, off-roaders. And it looks like we've got a Hurley concept here. And I see someone saying I had too much coffee. Uh, there is a ton of coffee and cappuccino here. I'm mostly five-hour energies, which are probably even worse for you. But, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's how we've got to roll for four or five days of auto show coverage. <laughs> Uh, we got more GM over here with the Buick. They actually did not really do anything for this show. They uh, they did debut a red version, a special edition of the Cascada convertible, but all the vehicles we've kind of seen before. So here's a look at their stage, which also similar to the Detroit show. Here we go, Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo really kind of took the show over on the first day by unveiling their Alfa Romeo Stelvio SUV. It is the second all-new vehicle from the brand as it makes its U.S. return. This right here is actually the Giulia, which it unveiled in Italy um, last year. We were actually there for that unveiling. And it's gotten rave reviews, the Giulia, and it's going to be arriving in dealers uh, next month. And here is the Stelvio. This is pretty much expected to be the bread and butter for Alfa Romeo's U.S. return as automakers are building a lot more SUVs and crossovers to meet uh, consumer demand as it moves away from sedans. And there's Bears Bears from uh, FCA who's the Alfa Romeo uh, spokesman for the brand. Let's go ask Bears a question. We're doing oh, a Facebook Live, Bears. Excellent. Nice to see you. So, thank you for coming. How has the reception been for the uh, Stelvio? It has been outstanding. It has been, uh, I think, greater than we, even we can imagine. Yesterday's uh, world debut of the, uh, the 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio here at the LA Auto Show uh, was a standing only, standing room only crowd. Well, uh, actually, the fire marshal had to stop letting people in because it was so packed. Yes, it, it, it was. <laughs> um, I, we could not believe it. We we're excited and thrilled to have this kind of reception here at LA. Um, I mean, this, this vehicle is uh, going to be part of the renaissance of uh, Alfa Romeo's return to North America, available in Q2 of 2017. Um, right here is a 505 horsepower uh, Ferrari-derived V6 engine. 177 uh, miles per hour, correct? 177, that's correct, Mike. Uh, 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Uh, based on simulations uh, that we conducted on the Nuremberg Ring, uh, we're predicting it to be the fastest SUV in the world, being out the top-of-the-line Porsche Macan uh, Turbo S. Um, so it's just a rocket, and uh, as you know, uh, the, the SUV market in North America is a, is a growing one, and uh, one that's very popular, and uh, growing into this market with Stelvio was important to Alfa Romeo, but being true to our DNA of the brand is even more important. I, I thought if you were by the vehicles, you usually had a dress on or you were a product specialist, not necessarily a spokesman. No, it's, it's, I'm a jack of all trades. What can I say? What all right. Thanks, Bears. My pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. Give, thanks for giving me a break from uh, talking. No problem. <laughs>
Again, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, as Bears said, Q2 of next year. And like I said, this is the bread and butter of their lineup. This is the Quattroporte performance version. They will have other versions. They have not announced pricing yet, unless Bears would like to uh, break that right here. No pricing at this point. Okay. Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> and let's move over to Acura. Acura also really um, didn't do too much at the show, but the Precision Concept, uh, this is what they did in Detroit last year, or well, earlier this year. Beautiful looking concept. And of course, let's go over to everyone's ultimate driving machine, BMW. Again, beautiful vehicles. Alfa Romeo is really trying to target BMW owners as well as other luxury owners kind of with their vehicles. And BMW has been the benchmark for a lot of these luxury sedans um, for years and decades. So they're really going after them. And we've got Mini here too that unveiled the uh, Countryman EV, I believe. So we've all seen the Countryman, or if you haven't, Google it. Let's move on over to Infinity, and then it looks like we've got Mercedes-Benz with AMG GTC Roadster, which it's a beautiful car. Again, a really aggressive design that uh, all the automakers are going for for the auto shows. And again, we got another SUV concept up here from Infinity. Again, consumers moving away from the sedans into the SUV segment. Automakers are trying to put up as many SUVs, crossovers, whatever you'd like to call them, as possible. And I just saw that someone was actually asking the price. I'm guessing that's for the Alfa Romeo. That's actually uh, funny because I didn't even see that yet. Hmm. And here's an interesting crossover actually from Infinity. Looks like it's got a 2.0 turbo in it. And again, the crossovers and hatchbacks are kind of making a return to the US after they kind of fell out of favor for some years when the automakers switched to the uh, smaller cars. Again, more coffee. And here we are at Mercedes-Benz. Here is the GT Coupe, the aforementioned GT Coupe that I met, or GTC Roadster that I mentioned. and the AMG E63 edition. A little dark, so sorry about that. And we got one more from Mercedes-Benz at the show, the Maybach convertible edition for it. Full name Maybach S650 Cabriolet, which is just a fancy term for convertible beautiful car though it actually looks like you know that is plastic I was thinking it was actually metal but automakers are using a lot more plastic and different materials to cut down on weight to improve fuel efficiency beautiful luxurious <laughs> interior here. all right so what are you gonna do to get it almost looks like a Bentley like interior <laughs> For someone who just asked about the Subaru, you can actually just go back in after we're done with this and go look at it. The video will be posted on the Detroit News Facebook page. But now on to Volvo, which has really been kind of moving their design forward. And they've been getting just accolades from everyone regarding their XC90, as well as most of the cars in their lineup. They've really gone for a tech standpoint and the autonomous vehicle technologies along with the adaptive cruise control and things of that nature 
they've really kind of stuck that out uh, and become one of the leaders in that kind of technology. And here we go, the V90 Cross Country. And we got a matte paint job here, which you typically can't get on actual production vehicles. The matte paint, while it looks cool and it has, it takes away the kind of glare and shininess of the vehicle, but it just has that very nice finish. You can't send them through car washes. <laughs> And also they get dented and scratched and just kind of nicked very easily, which is why automakers don't typically offer any vehicles with a matte paint job. Uh, let's go back over to Mercedes-Benz really quick actually because this AMG race car, uh, Autocritic Henry Payne again uh, for the Detroit News, said we should come by and check out. It's the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3. And we've got Lexus over here, which they didn't actually make any news really at the show, but they're really designing, they're evolving their design language to kind of keep up with everyone else. Their new vehicles, particularly this crossover right here, is fairly fun to drive, and they've also got their performance additions that have really just been kind of been rolling out uh, steadily. Again, Lexus is under Toyota. So they've been trying to be a little bit more aggressive with their design, which is why we come to the LC500. Very large grill, very smooth lines, and almost kind of looks like a roaster, but it does have a back seat in it. And here we are with Range Rover. I think uh, that reporter is speaking Italian, Spanish. Not sure. Uh, I'm not very good with foreign languages. But um, <laughs> here we are with Land Rover, Jag Rover. They showed off their Discovery, which they had uh, previously unveiled. But uh, always fun to just come over and check them out. And the other side of Land Rover, Jaguar. Or however, I got into a battle with this over with one executive. Either Jaguar or Jaguar, whichever one you prefer, I personally don't care. And we're here with the iPace concept that's showing off their regenerative braking systems. Other than that, we've got Maserati over here as well. Also a Fiat Chrysler brand that is kind of the other side of the coin for Alfa Romeo. Both are headed by Reed Bigland. Always fun to drive and just to actually just look at. They're also uh, going, getting into the SUV game for the first time ever in the company's more 100 year history with Maserati Levante that they unveiled, I believe, earlier this year in New York in March. Here's the Levante. I'm not sure whichever you prefer, either the Alfa Romeo or the Levante from Maserati. Both very, very high-priced SUVs that have a lot of performance. If you're a soccer mom and you roll from this, I think your kid is going to be extremely happy. And we've got two more stands, I believe, and then we're going to call this a wrap. We have Audi here, which has always had just beautiful vehicles, and the TTS with the um, virtual cockpit system, a very large HD screen right behind the steering wheel in the center of the center console, has been just getting rave reviews from a lot of the different critics, and it's not as distracting as some of the infotainment systems in other vehicles. 
Let's see. Yep, here we go. This is their digital cluster and what they call their virtual cockpit for Audi. And you can see your attention doesn't come to over here where the infotainment screen typically would be for a lot of the vehicles. So it just keeps you on your eyes on the road and it also has Google Maps which is really cool and it can completely take up that entire uh, virtual cockpit screen. And then we have Audi's showcase vehicles right now. The S5 Sportback. Quattro. Which I'm not sure what the full name of it is, to be honest. And I think I see an R8 over here, so uh, before we leave Audi, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> we got the IS5. And yeah, the R8 V10 Plus, as well as the R8 V10 Convertible. Um, Tony Stark, I believe, uh, was the one who kind of made these vehicles a little bit famous. I could be wrong in that with my movie trivia. But it is pretty much like driving a rocket when we had the wheel of this vehicle. It is so technologically advanced. The shifting, the downforce, and everything is perfectly tuned for getting pulled over in the suburbs or on the racetrack. Our auto critic Henry Payne recently reviewed this vehicle. You can also see that at DetroitNews.com. And we have the convertible version. And I guess we're gonna end at Hyundai, which they've got their Genesis brand that they kind of took out of the regular Hyundai lineup and put into a luxury brand, which a lot of people actually criticized them for doing and never thought that they would actually be able to be successful as a luxury car maker, but they have actually been doing very well with the Genesis brand and kind of making its own space. And of course, high profit vehicles such as these help the company overall, and they help them go into the regular mainstream and be able to invest and have trickle down of the technologies. And speaking of technologies, Hyundai is really, really touting its Ionic car lineup. They call it the Ionic Project because it is three cars. One is a hybrid, one is a plug-in hybrid, and then the other is just a traditional hybrid. So we've got an EV, a plug-in EV with a combustion engine, and then just a typical hybrid. It's the first auto manufacturer to ever do that with one nameplate. And they surprised everyone at this year's show with this vehicle. Yeah, I know, it's not as sexy as some of the other ones we saw, or as crazy as some of the ones from Toyota or some of the other people, but this is actually their autonomous concept that they hid in plain sight. They had it sitting on the show floor prior to their debut in their press conference, and no one actually knew it was autonomous because they took out that little license plate there that says it. And then during the entire press conference, they were talking about their plans to do an autonomous vehicle and their future technologies. And this is their EV version of the Ionic, and it's pretty much, I guess you could call it the fourth car in the Ionic lineup with the autonomous concept. And they're really hoping to kind of just bring autonomous vehicles to the mainstream, which even though they're not here yet, they're trying to cut the cost of them. And they actually have LiDAR sensors, radar, and everything inside the vehicle, unlike the Google vehicles that you'll see on the road sometimes or online that have the LiDARs on top. Ford Motor Company also has the LiDARs on top as well. And you can see the cameras up here, very sophisticated camera, use of cameras. All right, guys, I think that's it for the Detroit news from the LA Auto Show. There is another convent conference center hall, but uh, this was the major one with the most brands, so hope you enjoyed it, and look for all these vehicles at the Detroit Auto Show, and check the DetroitNews.com for everything from the LA Auto Show, and of course, for the upcoming Detroit Show.